Good evening, everyone. Parshas Chukas is the parsha that contains the cryptic set of laws that surround the procedure of the Parah Duma, colloquially translated as the Red Heifer. What was so unique about this procedure is that this procedure, its sacrifice of the Red Heifer, and its subsequent burning and ash sprinkling, on those people who had the level of ritual impurity of that of a uh, contact with a dead body, which is the highest and most stringent form, <clears throat> could thereby completely lose that status and become totally pure, totally tahor. This has implications for interaction with the temple service and other concepts that are not applicable today, but it's well known in Talmudic circles that the laws of the Pari Duma are notoriously difficult and hard to fathom. <clears throat> and not only that, but some of the laws, which we're not going to get into now, seem to be contradictory and are therefore even more difficult to understand. They're so difficult to understand that Shlomo HaMelech, King Solomon, who is attributed to be the wisest of all men, said that he understood every single facet and comment in the Torah, except for those surrounding the Paradigma. That's how difficult it was to understand, and is to understand. So, one could go in one of two ways <clears throat> with this perspective. The first way, which in some sense is tragic, is that, well, you know, I, I don't really get this, this doesn't make sense, so this Judaism thing is just not going to work for me because it's just... It just doesn't, I don't get it. And if I don't get it, therefore, it's not gettable. It's not understandable. I'm not going to dig it. I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to, you know, share it. I'm not going to pin it. I'm running out of social media terms to show affirmation or, or approbation. I'm just, I'm just not going to do it. If I don't understand everything, it's either all or nothing. <clears throat> you know, kind of, that's it. And the, uh, the interesting thing is that people don't operate that way in other facets of life. You don't see most people saying, I don't understand how my car works, particularly my catalytic converter. Say that five times fast. Most people don't even know their cars have one until someone steals it from underneath their car. I don't understand a catalytic converter, so I'm not going to drive my car, said no one ever. For some reason, people can go throughout life and say, you know what, I just don't understand it. But I'll work through it anyway. I understand cryptocurrency, but many people will still invest in it, people will still trade in it. There are many people who are avid golfers who don't really understand the geometry and the physics behind their swing, trying to drive the ball from one end of the green to the other. But they still play golf. That leads us to the second perspective, where we say, you know what? I don't understand everything about Judaism. I don't. But you know what? <clears throat> I believe that if God could figure out how to put this whole universe together all by himself, using the Torah as a blueprint, as our rabbi say, histakel baraiso bariyama, that God looked into the Torah, and from the Torah, almost like a set of blueprints, God created the world. That if God could do that, God probably knows what he's doing, so... I'm just going to take the whole Torah as a package. King Solomon got every single thing except for the paradigm. Can you imagine how frustrating that is? I can't even fathom what it's like to get everything in the universe. To be able, as a rabbi say, to understand the birds talking to one another. To understand languages of the animals. To be able to understand physics and to be in touch with all the deep scientific processes, among many others, in this world, and yet not get this one thing. There are many people, particularly toddlers and those who don't grow up from being in that toddler stage, that say, you know what, I don't, I don't get this, I'm just throwing it. And I'm just, that's it. King Solomon's perspective was a lot more mature. He said, you know what, I trust God, I understand that everything else has a rhyme and a reason, so if God put this in the Torah, it means that there's some purpose for it. I don't have to get it. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go with it. 
if we just trust in God and trust the process and understand based on our own finite level of understanding of whatever we do comprehend, either about Judaism or about the outside world, to be able to say, you know what? I don't get everything. But I can, I can tap into the idea that God created the universe to connect to mankind, to give mankind the ability to tap into God and that ultimate infinite pleasure of being connected to something greater and something bigger than us. Tap into that idea and say, you know what? I can do this. I don't have to get it 100%. I'm going to trust in Hashem, I'm going to trust in God, and I am going to follow the rest of the Torah it's contained. The choice is ours. But if we trust the process, like any player who trusts a coach, who trusts the system that the coach is trying to employ, who trusts a personal trainer, you know, we have a lot of people that we trust in life. And we can use this trust metaphor infinitesimally. If we trust the system, then we'll be able to tap into that amazing depth that system has, as we do in many other facets of our life, to connect to that ultimate good, to connect to Hashem. Have a great week.